Great. Let's take a look at navigation, uh, even though Matthias turns everything off. Uh, some people like to keep the navigation bars on or just to navigate with those uh, keystrokes instead of a mouse. Obviously, we can navigate by actually clicking in the solution window. Uh, that's the first thing people normally notice about Writer, but some of the other things that are really great about it is I can do a control tab. And when I do control tab, I get the switcher and I can go between any one of the files that I've been using, but I could do a control tab, leave up on the tab while I'm still holding the control key. And I could either use the mouse or the keyboard. If you see right here, these are numbered and lettered. So if I hit two, now it doesn't want to behave. Oh, two. I'm sitting the wrong key. Uh, then it takes me to my favorites. Or if I hit one, it would take to the solution window. So I can navigate by control tab and then the corresponding letter or number. So that makes it pretty quick and easy to get through a lot of the files with a nice little pop up. If uh, I do happen to open a window and then I want to close it again, uh, of course you can use the mouse, but if I do control F4, it will close that window, that tool window that I just had opened. And in this case, it was the uh, favorites window. If I am inside of an open file, I can use the alt left or alt right to move between the files. And as you see, as I'm doing an alt left and then an alt right, uh, you can see the tabs changing to which file and the corresponding code in it. Uh, if I just take the tabs off so that they're not shown, it'll just cycle through the files. You just don't see the tabs changing. Also, if I want to navigate a little bit differently, I can do a control plus F2, and that takes me to the navigation bar up at the top. And from here, I can move within a particular folder by using up and down, or I can move between folders in the folder hierarchy by using left and right. And as you see, if I hit down, it kind of brings a little drop down as well if it's not displayed right away. So I can navigate through this way as well to get to whatever I want to get to. So I could do full keyboard navigation if I want to. Uh, so there's tons of ways to be able to quickly switch between files. And as you work with Writer more, I'm sure you're going to find your favorites. Uh, one of the things that we can also do if I pick out a particular uh, method and I want to navigate inside of some code, I can do an alt backtick. And when I do that, a little navigate to box pops up. In here, if I'm on a function, and often we have pretty big functions or blocks of code, and I wanna see, you know, geez, where's this exiting? Here I can do my um, alt backtick, and then I could either just arrow to what I want to go to, maybe the function exits, or I could actually just start typing like EX for exit, and it'll highlight that part of the word. Then I could go see the function exits. And as you see, it's way down at the bottom and it puts the cursor right on that line for me. So alt backtick is a really great way to be able to navigate right through code. Uh, so if I put the cursor on the name of the function, I can then get to its exits. Uh, alternatively, if I move maybe to a class and I do an alt back, back tick, I can then get to maybe different symbols, extension methods, consuming APIs. Let's say I take the consuming APIs here for this student class in an MVC project. Here it shows a couple of different controllers edit and create, as well as the calculate grade method for a student. So it shows up uh, with all of the code that's actually using this. And then I can navigate to which piece of code I want to go to. Um, so it makes it easy, instead of having to be in a file and then use commands to get out of the file 
and go to another file, then scroll or page to where you want to go, you could just hop to where you want to go by doing an alt back tick and choosing the action that you want. Uh, so that's pretty great. Uh, another one that's also pretty great too is, uh, say I have this controller, student's controller, or even if I had, here's a better one even, a view, because we wouldn't expect uh, an IDE to connect code from a view to some of the models quite so robustly. But here, if I'm on a student object in a view, or MVC view, and I press F12, that's going to take me to the definition. So boom, goes right to the student class. So I can see what model actually gets passed and used in that view. So here I look at the code in my student class, see what I need to see, and then I want to go back to the view. I could do F12 again, and it will pop up all of my usages, and I can get to them. All right, so here I could go back to index or create or whatever. All right, so nice, easy way to be able to navigate by the symbols that you have. Um, other ways to get around inside of a file, uh, control clicks. So if I do control up and down, uh, you'll see that it moves differently. Also control left and right, we'll move it around between, now here in attributes of HTML, you have a lot to navigate through, but it does take you word by word back and forth. Uh, control home, control end, takes you to the beginning and end. Uh, and these are some common editor uh, features that you might see around the world in various editors, but they work really nice in Writer when paired with the other navigation goodies that we have. One of the best things that we do have uh, is the control click navigation, and Martin showed a little piece of this, uh, but also anywhere in here, if I do a control click on student, it's the same as an F12 it'll take me right to student. So if you're more of a mouse person, you could just do a control click. Uh, I can also go to, let's say I go to my layout and I wanna look at JavaScript even. Anytime I see an underline, like I see here, these JavaScript files, even the minimized ones, and I do a control click, it will take me to that file. So that's a great way to be able to navigate. Another way too is anytime I see an attribute, and this is very similar to what Martin showed, with the like ASP controller, ASP area, any kind of attribute that goes somewhere here to the home controller, if I do a control click, that's where it takes me. So control click goes all over the place between partial views, between CSS, JS files, uh, views to objects, back and forth, uh, all different sorts of places. Also, if I am perhaps using a tag helper as well, which these are some popular little items in the land of ASP.NET. Here's a couple of pieces of custom code in a tag helper to do some email. If I just do a control click here, it will actually take me to that class as well. So there's even things that are not underlined. You can do a control click and move around. So wherever you're at, just try it. Just try control clicking around. You'll be able to see where it takes you and bounce back to where you were before. So that's pretty cool that we have uh, uh, this very nice, easy, clickable way of being able to do this. Now inside of files, for example, like the create.cshtml, if you're working with something like an HTML or declarative syntax, uh, CSHTML, which is a mix of HTML and Razor pages. Uh, if you're inside of that, the hierarchy can get pretty nested and they can get pretty large. You're often building very grand, complex DOMs. So whenever I'm somewhere in here, first off, you notice if I click anywhere or navigate with the keyboard anywhere, it'll give me nice highlights. So here I'm on a label, so it's showing me labels, all of the labels that I have, and they're in a nice, uh, like a violet color. 
Um, also, you can see different colorings, uh, like a light yellow here for the stiff, uh, a nice light green for the form, a blue for a different div. So the nested divs, it kind of shows a little bit different yellow with the one I happen to be in right now. And this gives a breadcrumb that has coordinated colors as well. So here on the label, you can see it's like a pinkish color. I can click on the div and it will take my cursor up to the div, up to the form, up to the outer div. So anywhere that I move around in these breadcrumbs, just by clicking, it will take the cursor and place the cursor there so that I can start working there. Anywhere that I click or move with arrows, same thing, you'll see the breadcrumbs changing. So everything stays in sync. So this gives us not just a way to navigate, but it does give you a nice hierarchy as to kind of where you're at in a file, which is really fantastic if you're working with stuff like uh, HTML. Uh, when I'm in HTML, I can always do things like an alt backslash. Once I do that, again, another hierarchy, and I just really can't stress enough, if you're working with large HTML files, if you're a web developer, that hierarchy for building the DOM is so important. And how many times do you end up missing a, a closing tag or something, and it just causes all sorts of small problems. But here I can actually see the hierarchy quite easy. I can navigate with the cursor or the mouse, it doesn't matter. I can pick out that element that I want and boom, I can just press enter and go right to it. So alt backslash is really great, but it's not just in HTML. Uh, if I go somewhere else and I do an alt backslash, I will see that I can actually get a slightly different box here, but I can enter the symbol and I can find symbols that are related. And here you can see, because I was working with the student object, all of these items that you see in here, these objects and different entities are all something that the student class is related to or using, like the degree type and the grades and all of that good stuff. So from here, I can either type or just navigate with the keyboard to get to where I want to go. So both of those are alt backslash. It just works a little differently if you're in uh, HTML versus C sharp or a scripted type of a language. So uh, more navigation, a classic control G. Uh, if half the time I turn off line numbers, uh, sometimes they're useful, sometimes they're not. And I guess it's quite a preference. Um, there's line 20, I didn't have line numbers on. Uh, if I did want to turn line numbers on and off, uh, Matt's already brought up good old shift shift. This is how I turn them on and off. Shift, shift, show line numbers or don't. All right, so that's an easy one for there, not navigation. But if you do want to use Control-G to move back and forth between line numbers, there you go. Uh, that's kind of an old school type navigation. Uh, and then again here, even if it's not HTML, Control-Left, Control-Right will take you to the beginning and ending of different words. Uh, if I do Alt-Down, Alt up, it will take me to the next item. So in this case, if I'm in a class, it's properties. If it's HTML, it'll take me to the next element. Um, some other things I could do, I'm in here working and often you make a change and then you go off to do something else, you navigate somewhere else and then you think, oh it, yeah, I just changed something not more than 30 seconds ago. And I forgot, I forgot what it is um, because, you know, 30 seconds is a long time in programmer time. So control shift E brings up the recent locations. So we're stalking you, here it is. You can go and see exactly where you've been and what you've been doing. Oh, I see, I was working here in create. I could go right to that page and then continue from there. So recent edits. Uh, it's really great because as you can see, even here in a demo, it doesn't take very long where you have tons of files open. And then again, after 
just a short period of time, you have totally forgotten what you were doing just a few seconds ago. And folks, if you're younger, like when you get a little older, like me, yeah, it just gets worse. So I need control 50 all the time. Uh, some other things I could do with objects, if I do uh, control shift 11, very similar to the F12, it'll let me do a good type declaration as well, things like that. Uh, also, if I do an F12 or a control shift 11 on an object that is a framework object, and I have access to that code, then I can actually go to that code. So Microsoft's code, .NET Core, or whatever. So I could do stuff like that sometimes. Uh, so it'll let me do that. Sometimes, oh, there we go, external sources. Sometimes it takes it a second. Uh, so there might be a lag here with the video, but there you go. I did an F12 on an int, and then here I get to see what that looks like. So this is a great way to be able to go and see what's under the covers. So that's pretty cool as well.